Chainsaw Man is the type of overhyped show I try to avoid to not deal with the simpery on display by their toxic fan base. It's a typical big show in making their debut. And ever since My Hero Academia came out, I feel like there's been more hype around the genre. With the release of Demon Slayer to Jujutsu Kaisen to Spy X Family, we have Chainsaw Man not being any different. But maybe it is. With it felt like a constant delays for the past two years on the series, for it to finally come out, fans are pretty disappointed that it only got 12 episodes, rather than a typical 24 25 for most other shonen counterparts you would think for a show of this magnitude would easily get. Maybe they got shafted and were left with a small budget, so this is all they could get. But I guess I'll watch it anyway, since it's only 12 episodes. How good could it be? This has to be the most teased anime in the last decade, and the only question remained was, will it be able to deliver? We had a deal, did we not? My chest is yours for the fondling. Fondle away. And yeah, I'd say it did that. So here's a basic plot. Denji has a generic sad anime backstory with no mother to speak of and a deceased dickhead of a father, leaving him in a massive debt in the millions, creating long-term psychological trauma and making him a dog of the Yakuza, which leaves him dirt poor on the streets, killing demons, selling his body for parts, literally, and dignity with not much so of a second thought when doing so. Even after killing his way out, he loses his best friend up to this point, he's still able to adjust to his new life quickly. In this world, everyone and everything is replaceable. Even when he escapes the mob, he's still the dog of Makuma. But hey, for all the dogs of Mommy Makuma. <coughs> loving her for her looks, ability to feed him, and she doesn't insult him, and also being the only person up to this point, other than Puccia, to not immediately screw him over, making his reasoning for liking her up to this point of his life very understandable. I know people hate her later on, and the anime teases the idea that she's actually evil, but Denji doesn't care if he's fighting for the good guys or the bad guys. It's like that moment when my friend told me he was watching Overlord for season three and he just now realized wait we're the bad guys are we the baddies you the entire time were on the villain side and you're like huh i didn't know that chainsaw man has to be the most intense copium infused fever dream put onto the big screen there are no moral standards and anyone with a moral general compass or normal human ideology fucking dies like how the debt collector told dingy he didn't care if he had to sell his body or beg he better have his goddamn money his dad owed him by tomorrow and this nigga's like five. Not to mention how the show had the trope moral moments where the main character would have saved the civilians and give up his advantage to help them. And Denji's just like, looks to his left, looks to his right. Fuck this guy. By the end, I'm just laughing my ass off when Samurai Sword Sama is telling Denji that he's willing to turn himself in if they allow these two to kill him as a way of atonement for all of his sins. And I'm just thinking, you dumb fuck. Do you not know who the fuck you're talking to right now? You not know who the hell that that boy is. He's the ultimate chat I've ever seen. He don't give a flying fuck about the dead. Heck, he doesn't give a fuck about his own allies. Shit, the only reason he cares about Makuma is because she's got that WAP on her and gonna let him smash if he does a good job. None of our main cast members have the type of moral standards we're accustomed to seeing. The hero's mindset where they try to look to see the good in a person. That shit doesn't exist in Chainsaw Man. The concept of what is good is a single individual person's point of view. Each person can have a different aspect of what makes a good person. Chainsaw Man takes our social basis of what is good and basically says our characters don't give a shit about that. Underage drinking, child homelessness, prostitution, killing, a lot of sex talk. All of these topics were just put into the first episode of the anime and you were able to see from multiple characters point of views and takes on what is bad. And you saw right here the ones that weren't phased by it are the ones still alive today. You see her? She's dead. You see them? They're dead. Even the woman who was going to use Denji as a meat shield for her and Aki, then try to take advantage of him. Mind you, he's a minor still. She's drunk. In the next episode, she literally just dies because she wants to save Aki. See, that was your fault for trying to be a hero. Chainsaw Man is literally punishing you for trying to be a hero. She could have just taken the selfish approach that she's done all this anime and used Denji as a distraction to run. Normal human ideology in this world will get you killed. Power has ran away multiple times where she's trying to preserve her own life. We first get introduced to her lying and bashing Denji's head just to get her cat back. She doesn't stop them from trying to sacrifice Denji to the infinity demon. She's literally egging on more conflict. Then she also runs away from the snake and katana demon and then she literally says to like what are their bosses I don't give a shit if the human race dies or the demon world dies as long as I live. That's who power is. Every important character that is able to change the plot is selfish and they'll turn on each other if it means preserving their own life or interests. Each character is unapologetically selfish and I love it. Like, when's the last time in any of these seasonal anime 
is you can literally look at the cast of characters and say they're willing to up and leave this entire show to go do their own shit. Literally none of them. The Misfit of Demon King Academy too. They're all just a harem for him. Demons in the Shadow, you have the main guy, his harem, and that's it. Bofuri, they're not leaving the Mabel Guild anytime soon, and I don't even know what their own interests are, and I like that show. You could literally go down the list of all the seasonal anime shows. So much of this is structured around the main character. It's not, it's crazy. They don't have any outside thoughts have to deal with them. You know that game of how long does it take you to spot the main character? It's become a meme at this point in the anime community, and it's so true. It doesn't take long to identify who's important to the story and who's a background character. So many animes feel soulless where I'm watching one character navigate a world of NPCs, where side characters are willing to give their main guy an arm and a leg to help them, or devote their entire time on a Saturday afternoon to a person they just met last week because they're the main protagonist. This show eliminates that distinction by having a dress code. You know how you have in a high school, middle school, a dress code. You want to know why that's even implicated in schools? So there's no bullying because rich kids would have different shit than people who didn't weren't as fortunate as them. And they're outright just showing you. Now you can't tell the difference between who's important and who's not important, who's a background character and who's actually going to be making it to season two. This makes your experience of watching it for the first time 10 times more enjoyable. Like, like you're in the real world rather than some fantasy world. Sure, they have morning scenes, but there's barely any real crying. Aki is crying over the loss of her mentor and partner with him just now realizing that she had a crush on him the entire time and wanted them both to move away from this industry and this go off to a quiet city and spend the rest of their lives together in, in peace and denji and power over here are stealing his basket of apples with me uncontrollably laughing that he was even a bigger dick by just leaving him one apple from a basket of apples one of the major factors in the anime's purpose is the main character's goal i highlight this in literally almost every one of my videos for reviews because it's so important this usually dictates how long a show will actually last and can keep an audience's retention chainsaw man knows this and said fuck it my boy just wants to get laid that's it there's no fantasy demon lord for him to go slay there's no big title that he wants to pursue or get there's no honor or reward that he wants like all these other characters he just wants to get laid he's just like me for real for real taking a much different approach of making the goal or purpose of a show making it silly but ultimately going away with the message of it dreams only matter to the person it's for and the stronger person dictates the value of that said dream it's not how grand or seamlessly impossible the dream is i want to find the one piece i want to become the hokage or to become the wizard king what matters is how important does a character want it how and to what length are they willing to invest to get it and then throwing that accomplishment seamlessly out the fucking window i don't know if you guys know basketball but shaq always had this monologue of his father taking away all of his trophies after he won them and saying go get the next thing chase a bigger dream the scene where denji is talking to makama about the importance of a dream and how his last one doesn't inspire him to and how his last dream doesn't inspire him anymore or excite him as it did before he had it she basically tells him to find something new that's going to make him focus enough to get that and to enjoy the journey which this scene is amazing for two reasons one the message and two the animation my god like how could you make a handshake scene this fucking hot i'm like god damn i'm fucking sweating over here this is getting me kind of excited do i gotta chub down there let me let me check let me check what matters is did you enjoy the ride 1000 episodes in are you still hooked on the goal guys in life everyone wasn't meant to go on this grand adventure with you but do you still feel the same way you did the first day you did the last chainsaw man definitely had tropes in the anime but they were able to turn those tropes around right on their head very quickly makama being a bad guy is not surprising or shocking in any way to me the entire organization she runs is filled with the terrible people who will turn on each other if it means they're closer to their goals. Denji at the beginning can already tell that she's evil in episode 2. You can't compare Chainsaw Man to other hero based shonens. None of the main characters are moral figureheads. Heck, Denji and Power outright confess they don't give a shit which side in all this wins. Characters are refreshingly unique and self motivated. Scenes look like other animes I've seen before, but it's like a love child of all the things I loved about those shows. Personally, my least favorite genre is horror. I didn't watch Nightmare on Elm Street with the inside out flesh man with knives for hands. I didn't watch her play Corpse Party because my friend teased how there would be guts and piss all over the place. I hate gore and horror, but I'm somehow standing up and going crazy when he does this and this and this. The gore that is drawn is presented in a way where a big baby of the horror genre can watch it. I found the gore way more tasteful than the puke scene. If that's any indication of where I stand with the show. This has to be one of the greatest adaptations ever and the manga will never be better if this keeps up. Spoilers, don't 
prepare you for Chainsaw Man. They really don't. Shit is wild. Honestly, Chainsaw Man not only feels refreshing, but it's unapologetically one of the most themselves anime of all time. Instead of being bashful and being self-insert fantasy, Dinji is a character that is stupid but fun, just like the teenage years of your life. Instead of being the archetypical shy character companies make and push down your goddamn throat, and they do it because they're afraid of the parent backlash or afraid of being canceled where we all have to imagine and insert ourselves into the fantasies and say we would have done this a lot differently dingy is straight up his own guy he responds how people his age would respond if they were in the same situation he acts like a total dick with a lot of american protagonists trying to base their comedy around shitty jerk characters insert a joke about velma one of the biggest complaints that that show has is there are no redeemably good characters in from the show except for narvel since he hasn't had a major character flaw that makes him look like an asshole, but because of his simpery for Velma, a person that doesn't respect him at all, it might be out of pity that we don't want to hate him. And we all know that they want to give these characters some type of redeemably good quality where they have a character art that, that makes it seem like they've grown, but that's not possible at this point, where she's unforgivingly a wanker to any unfortunate soul that meets her. And you, some of you guys want to know if that's the case, why is Denji any different? Denji doesn't have a real code of honor. Just look how he grew up. He basically is a gutter rat kid in an abusive upbringing growing to an adult that never knew basic comfort. He's only had one friend, the chainsaw devil Pochita, and he's never got to live a somewhat normal-ish type of life. That's why Makama is such a big deal for him. And he wants a piece of that Dami Mommy. He's just like me for real, for real. I mean, this guy literally kicks a dude that is pissing him off in the dick multiple times and says, that's just how I fight, dude. You know how your parents taught you basic human decency around Around kindergarten or whatever he's the he's the equivalent of a teen that was never taught those decencies to better himself so he doesn't do any better and that just makes him refreshingly funny in today's clogged anime world where dudes literally either act like total babies or like i'm too big brain for you megalomaniacs dingy is simple and man is that relatable